May I account, if you please, the listeners with the tale? But only my friend. It's augmented by ale. <laughs> we were sitting in my local tap house, O'Reilly's down the road. They do a good point of tennis for about 40 euro and 60 cent. When a fable, a stranger walks in and I say, I don't recognize you. You are not from these lands, for you are wearing Adidas tracksuit and an away Celtic top. But your general aura is putting me off to make me believe that you are not. From the north of Dublin, I said, young sir, come sit for perch yourself upon a bar stool and tell us the fables of the lands of the oil that you are from, because it is not our emerald oil. And true, from the lilting yet dulcet tones that emitted from the man's esophagus, it was quite clear that he was not from our oil, but from another oil, the British Isles, the Scotland part of the British Isles. But he says to me, no longer shall we be a part of the British Isles. No more, when he said, will we be underneath the British rule and in a unit. No, for my friend, he told me, about the stories of Will I Am, Preach. And he told me how they would prefer to step out from underneath the auspices and become a sovereign and self determined nation, recognized not only by the member states of the United Nations, but by the hearts and minds of each individual person on the earth. And then he sat there and began to tell me of this wonderful life they would soon lead, breaking sh the shackles and chains that have once oppressed them, those steel binding cages that once crushed them into almost oblivion, and made them an unrecognised nation, completely submerged in British culture, and I said, hang on a minute, if Dublin could do the same thing, if the north side, the lord and ladies of the north side, could band up against our south side so-called brethren, who sit at home in their fortified locations on the Aylesbury Road known as houses that are massive with blind Porsches and Lamborghinis and BMW sitting in the driveway dormant like steel chariots and they sip Jemmy Red and they have their feet in bleeding therapeutic hot massagers. Get out of there. And they step forward and tell us, oh, but you see, they will offer us mere tokens of appreciation and contribution and tell us that we will merge the red and the green lines. We don't want to be merged. We want to be separate. We want free. We want to be established. We want to be a self-determined nation. I want to sit among the member states and say to them, no, no longer. No longer will I hear that Grafton Street is the main thoroughfare in this fair lad, O'Connell Street. Why do you think they put the spire there? The stiletto in the ghetto. That is what it's there for, for the race. It's a mark, a mark of independence, a mark of freedom, a mark of sovereignty. That pin in the bin, as is known by those Southside boys, will now become a North Star to our baby Jesus. This place is our Bethlehem. This place is our light. Okay, and that cannot be ignored. I say, I propose to you and the Kenny that you perform a referendum that separates the North Side of Dublin from the South Side. You have been warned. And as we became more passionate in the flex of spit and emitted from our lips, the young Glaswegian man began to sing and began to take it in. He said to us, he turned to us, he looked at us, and he fixed us with a stare. And what did he say to us? It's a full of shite, lads. So I bleed in headbutt and took a smokes. Sovereign, there's a tale for you.